two. Five. And we're live. Three. You should give it a Keith Lipinski countdown. In five. Make the podcast in five, four, three. He does love his uh his countdowns. He's got a shirt. The I have official... I have one of those shirts. Me too. The official Keith Lipinski countdown t shirt. Did you get our own shirts? Made by uh Marty and Sarah. Did she draw it? She drew it, right? I believe she did, yeah. Yeah. I uh I actually I think I'm I'm guessing they got them printed at Pro Wrestling Tees. Most likely. Um, I just I just put an order in for my band. Our first time ordering from Pro Wrestling Tees. First order. Custom tees. Huh? Customs. Customs. And uh, I gotta say, they uh the communication. I work with Jared. Do you know Jared over there? I do. Jared was ph- phenomenal. That's I don't know where the team card shirts were made. Dude, Jared was phenomenal. I, I was I was very I I even emailed Ryan, the owner, and I said, uh, I said I just want to commend Jared. You know, I've CC Jared on. I was like, dude, he is extremely professional, quick with the replies, dude. He edited all my stuff as I needed it fast, dude. I was I was very um very pleased with my Pro Wrestling Tees experience. I yeah, they say. uh they did a they did a very good job. So. Yeah, dude. No, they're they're good. So I'm excited. You got some new new t-shirts coming. New tees. Sick. 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 Cool, man. So uh yeah, that's about uh you know, that's 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 enough of our t-shirt time. <laughs> t-shirt time. T-shirt. It's t-shirt time. But you know actually what time it is, Basil? Do you know it's what time it is? Time for the backstage boys podcast. Did you just steal my gimmick? This what I did. Episode forty five. Let's see if you got this. I think you're right. Did I get this? It's either, uh, we're 44 or 45. We are episode number 45, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. The Jim Lina Memorial Tournament recap episode is what we're doing here today. Uh, we're back after a very busy, uh, busy weekend. Busy, busy weekend. You got a busy weekend, and then I got a, and then I got a busy weekend coming up. So yeah, you got another busy weekend. So what's your, you know, that's why we're. We're getting this thing recorded, done in the can, uh, so we can get out there. Because you got to be on the on a flight, basically. You gotta make it, to make yeah, I got to be up at five in the morning to go on a flight to Vegas tomorrow for Impact. Yeah, let's tell the folks what you're up to. You're going to Impact Wrestling in Las Vegas. I got yelled at by Ross Foreman for not coming to this. Yeah, well, I told him <laughs> I invited you, and you didn't want to come. I, you know what, I. I, you know, like, looking... I'm not even that big of a fan of Impact anymore. Yeah, That's what oh, you said to Ross. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. You're like, yeah, the product's kind of gone downhill. <laughs> never, never. How <laughs> never. dare you? How I wouldn't say you? never. Let's not. Let's not go that far. I've never. I've never said those words. Yeah, no. You, you were. You were even trying to be like, dude. The whole Colgan era was so good, so I innovative. Like... <laughs> Did you see him flexing and going brother in the locker room with air, you, with uh, can we, Before we start, can you um, can you just give one of the the trend the the, the trend oh, tra- use the Marco <laughs> Stun example as as one? Explain to the listeners what this is, what we're okay. doing here. <laughs> so Trent's impact isms, you can literally if if this is outside of impact, Trent's like Trent's very critical. Old school, no matter what it is. That's right. If you put it in impact, Trent has this positive spin that he magically spins on it if it's an impact, if it's, if it's anything related to impact. I'm a corporate so, guy. I know, I know the art of the spin. Let's we'll just put that out there. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> so, Marco Stunt in AEW. Um, you know what? Actually, I don't want I don't want to do the Marco Stunt because he's he's been getting a lot of bullshit and he's... You know, what we'll do, really? you know, do, yeah, well, do you know what we'll do? We'll do the AEW championship. That, that I think that's a good, that's a, that's a better one because that's an inanimate object. Maybe next week we'll do the Marco Stunt. One. Maybe, <laughs> do you know what we might do is an impactism every week? All right, deal. An impact, yeah, yeah, take that, uh, impact lounge. Yeah. We got our own impactism. All right, well, go ahead, tell the uh, tell so... the AEW title. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Impact Championship got stolen out no, of uh, AEW Championship. Oh yeah, sorry. The the AEW Championship got stolen out of Jericho's limo while he was uh having a fine uh dining experience at Long Horse Longhorn Steakhouse. Right. And uh so <laughs> the the title the title gets stolen. 
And Trent's like, ha ha, fuck AEW. No, I didn't say ha ha. Yeah, I said this is. No, I did not. You posted enough memes to laugh about it. I posted the memes for sure. (laughs) The crying Jordan face in the. In the AEW belt, yeah, I definitely posted memes. That's, no, but that's this is the ism. That. This is the ism that I that I posted. Like, I didn't laugh. At, let's let's put it this way. I, I don't I, I don't like thieves. So I wouldn't laugh at it, but I, the memes were hilarious. <laughs> I put that out there. Damn right. Anyway, okay, go. so basically, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. Fuck AEW. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, if the Impact Championship got stolen, <laughs> these fucking low life marks. Stealing such a prestigious world title, do they not care about the history of professional <laughs> wrestling? Do they not have the audacity to understand the meaning behind this championship title? Don't you even disgrace it by calling a belt. I'll side with McMahon on this one. It is a championship <laughs> title that represents honor, uh, prestige, and the history of this business for the last 18 years. And that's what you call the positive spin. <laughs> uh, that's good next oh, week we're gonna marco stun i still think the tenille dash one is the best yeah all right we're gonna save that one for next week no that, that'll be next week because i that's have to see it this one. week so i don't want to die the tenille dash one is good okay we're gonna get to that one next week but <laughs> <laughs> in that the was meantime, probably the most true one, that one I, called is... you, I called you out on it like 30 seconds after she signed yeah, but here's the thing. But even with that one, let let's be honest. Even with that one, I couldn't. I couldn't completely. In 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 honesty, you, you still have not been able to. But she, yeah, you still have not been able to. I can't. I feel like I feel like three more months on Impact, you're gonna complete. <laughs> with our experience with her, I can't. It's it's hard. But anyway, we'll we'll, we'll get to that though. We'll we'll still find a way to joke the spin. That's for sure. But uh, well, let's get. <laughs> but for now, we're gonna recap the Jim Lyon Memorial Tournament. Guys, we're not going to go match by match. That'd be ridiculous. There was a There's lot of matches. Matches. There's no point in going match by match. You can go to cagematch.net for that. Dot net, right? Dot net. You can go to cage match for that and, and get your match by match. But we're going we're gonna to talk highlights. We're going to talk, uh, you know, big uh, moments, things that stuck out to us. So let's do that. That'd be more fun to us. So let's go ahead and jump into that, Basil. Let's say any, before we start, though, any... Um, well, before we start, we should talk about it. We got we lost FOD two day one. We had no we did, FOD two. Unfortunately, he had a uh, he had a personal issue with his daughter, and uh, he could not make it. He had to choose uh, family over wrestling. Of course, that's a no brainer. But um, you know that's always tough, right? When you're running a promotion, and the day of a very critical part of the show is off of it, and it's like, oh shit, we, you know, what do you do? I mean, that is. That's tough because he's a very critical part of that show. He's a very big draw. So, you know, you got to – the trick is to give people an alternative that's going to make up for it because you are – you know, the card has – it's subject to change, and now it's changed. So do you, are you letting people down? Do people get pissed? Do you offer money back? What do you do kind of thing, right? It gets a little tricky. What do you think? I mean, it's – it, I, I, I don't spot. think I mean, it, it's a tough spot, but I think we made up for it really well because the matches that were delivered because of it mm. um, made made up for it. Honestly, like and and Fatu is my oos, but we oos, um, I feel like we made up for it and the fans got a match, got multiple matches from the replacement who was Paco. Paco. What a what a break for now here's the thing. You know, one these are these are the moments I give people a break. And Paco got a break out of this. You know, I mean it was like it's a crazy replacement to put in because it's like you're going from Fatu to Paco, but Paco got a chance and that's the key. And I thought that was pretty cool. That is that that was pretty cool that Paco got a chance to shine, and man, did he ever! Let's let's let since we mentioned Paco, let's just talk about it. Paco against Jake Atlas in that round. Man, first round. that was. I kind of want to say that was my match of the night for night one. I think it stole the show night one to me. That was a fantastic yeah. match. And I've never been a big Paco guy. You know, a lot of the fans are very into Paco. I've never been a big Paco guy, but he. He converted me, man. I was very impressed with Paco and what he did. Jake and Atlas also. This you know? is this is one of those times where it it really does pay to put a wrestler in a similar weight class. Yes. 
it yes. it really does. I mean, I'm not saying that that Jake Atlas is in the same weight class, but he's a smaller stature dude. Um, but and their styles worked extremely well with one another. Yeah, they sure did, man. He uh, I recall the only time I've seen Jake Atlas, he made one impact appearance, I believe, right, like six months ago. You remember uh, that? Maybe in Ve- when they did the Vegas ones, it was Vegas. Yeah, it was in the Vegas tape. Things. So. Yeah, That's I mean, he does. Time I saw him. He does a lot of West Coast circuits, so like bar wrestling, um, PWG, um, PCW Ultra. He does. He does a lot of. He does a lot of that loop over there. Has he? Because he's from LA. Has he ever been to um, maybe the Midwest before? Or was that his debut in the Midwest? No, he's wrestled for um, for Rise before oh that's Midwest. right you got a picture of him yeah yeah that's yeah right. and then he's been on the east coast with gcw gotcha okay yeah i i, I remember i remember yeah you did get that photo of him at uh at rise during the it was like during pride weekend yeah it was the pride and joy show right right cool yeah otherwise i didn't see that but i remember that like i said the one time i saw him was he fought i wanted it was it was definitely I, it was definitely impact like the main show i want to say i thought he I think he fought swan i can't remember maybe not i'm i could be wrong but uh but no he's he was great him and him and, and paco just tore it down man i was like look at these two it was fantastic fantastic highlight of yeah, the, of the it, it was a fantastic match um i just thought it delivered i mean what was it like six minutes that that match Ah, maybe six to eight tops. It was, I think it was like six fifteen, six thirty. If yeah, I'm trying def- to remember from what Jimmy D was saying, I can't recall, but it was definitely not long. That's for sure. Not a long match, but it was. I mean, it was action packed. You know, bell bell to bell. It was all the way full force. So I, I, I man, I was like I said, I, I never really gave Paco much props until that match that uh, he converted me. You know, a lot of times all it takes is one match to get you, you know, and that's, that was the one for me. I'm, I was, I was sold on, on Paco after that. Yeah. He impressed me. What's another highlight of night one that you got? I mean, obviously the eventual winner, um, Josh Alexander had, uh, had, had a nice little, a nice little banger as they call it against Jake something. That was a, that was a big highlight too. Yeah, that that was a that was a good match. They had a nice slow build. They had a lot of they had a lot of uh two near fall two counts. Um, yeah. Non-title. I mean, Jake is the Heritage Champion. So this was a nice this was a nice uh matchup in the sense that like you had a champion taking on a former heavyweight champion and these two. I mean, they I mean, Jake did some missile launch thing into the crowd and they hit hard, man. For round 1, these two hit hard. And it didn't make Jake look weak at all. Not at all. Because no. the next night he had a he had very dominant performance in a in a in a five way scramble and defended his heritage championship. Um, and besides, he he is like I said, he is the heritage champion. Yeah. So it doesn't tie up both belts for the next three months. That and I'm and I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm. I was never a fan of one guy holding multiple titles. I get it for story purposes. You do it, um, but, but when it's uh, the mid card and the 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 main title, yeah. And I'm not. I mean, I'm trying to call heritage title mid card, but you know what I mean. Like it's it's not the it's heavyweight. Not, it's, it's not the heavyweight it. title. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, remember when Goldberg had the U.S. Championship and then won the World Championship? Yeah, he relinquished the the U.S. Championship right away, but like. Like, what good did it do, any of it, right? You know, yeah, like, like, he held that, and it's like, okay, well, you got both, and you're not, which one do you defend? And if you lose, you can't lose the U.S. title as the world champion, obviously. So you're, no, you're yeah, stuck. It, 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 yeah, it looks bad. I like it when when you lose your mid-card title, then you go on, like, a two- or three-month run, and then you go up to that main event spot. Right, right. It, it's It's better that way, for sure. For sure. So yeah, no, I mean, I want I want Jake to have to just keep dominating the uh, the heritage belt. That's that's what he should be focused on. That's what we should be focusing on for him. The idea is to he is he has become that one that has really put some prestige back into that title. Not that it, it lost it, but having a really strong champion like him is good stability. 
good matches. You know, I think it's going to really define. I think he's going to define the title finally. Is what it's going to be. You know, because we, you know, he's he's a, a lot of a lot of the the current Jake something that people know is is made in AEW, but that heritage part of things is going to be really tied into his build and his character. So cool. What other what other uh, highlights we got from um from the night one? What do we got? Oh, you know what? Good... Um. I actually really like the opening match, Laredo Kid and Ace Austin. Yeah, I, you know Ace Ace came to play, man. He was fired up like all day coming in. He was definitely good, and Laredo too. Laredo's like super proud to be there. Did you catch that? Like he was very, very like public Laredo, about. Yeah, Laredo loved it. I mean, it's also good that, um, like I've known Laredo now because of Impact, and then. Um, and then just a few other random promotions that we worked at. So whenever I always feel like whenever a wrestler knows more people at a place he's not at often, he feels a lot more comfortable. I mean, he had the Lucha brothers, uh, you had a bunch, you had LAX and just, just a lot of people for him to, to feel comfortable around. And I really feel like it helped him out because he didn't feel like he was out of his element too much. Right. And I think Ace is really good about working with those guys and that style he made Laredo feel pretty comfortable right off the bat. You know, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Ace is another one, man. I'm a big fan of Ace Austin. I think he he's so young, and I think he's at a good level at this age already. And it's like, man, this guy, can you imagine him 10 years from now? You know, like, he's already – and he, he definitely he's growing. He's constantly growing still. But could you imagine him in 10 years? Like, man, Ace Austin's got character work down and stuff. I mean, he's going to be fantastic. In 10 years yeah. from now, even like he's gonna I be mean, an unstoppable guy 10 years from now. No, I mean, I I completely agree. I mean, I feel like in five years, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, he, oh, definitely sooner, but I'm like, in 10 years, like at 33, the kid will be like, Jesus, legend he's gonna status. Be 33 in 10 years, Fuck like, me. Uh, right? He's gonna be 33 <laughs> only in 10 years and be like a goddamn, you know, nearly like a 15 year veteran. That's insane, but. Think about that. Like, at, he's going to be so far advanced uh, at that stage. It's going to be fantastic. So, yeah. What's another one, man? Go ahead and talk about the one that everybody's talking about. There was a. Uh, well, you know, is, uh, is, is, is it the moment that I'm telling you that that was my favorite that day? Uh, no, I don't know. Maybe tell me. Go ahead and tell the fans. The, the MJF send off. Oh well. Let's uh, hold on. Let's talk about Sammy Callahan, good brother number three. Good brother number three. Kid got a title shot already. Huh? How about that? Man, one match in. One match in. He got a title one shot. One match in on a fight, I mean, for the, <laughs> fight for the future match. Well, would, and then he gets a title thought. shot. What the hell kind of business are we in? I thought we were old school. I guess so. I thought we. I thought we respect the path to the championship. I mean, the way he's getting title shots, you would have you would have thought he's been wrestling here for years. Man, yeah. you would have thought he'd been wrestling since like 1987 or something. Jeez, I mean, go figure. What a what a world. Only America. But, uh, hey, we're granting opportunities to the guy, you know. Good for him. Good for him. But, uh, so, Big Brother number three and Sammy Callahan had a pretty good match. There was a little interference in this one. You want to tell people about the interference? Man, dude, hold on. Let's 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 not go all the way to the interference first because <laughs> there was everything but the kitchen sink, I think, was in this match, literally. We had tables. We had kendo sticks. We had chairs. We had staples. We had bleeding hair dye in this bleeding. match. We ble- really? Really? Oh, dude, that, Sam, that was Sammy's hair dye that was all over his face. What, is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. What in the fuck? I was like, what is that? You know, we were like, it, it was like it made for a really cool like war battle effect on his face. Right, that's what I thought he did. I thought that's no, what it dude, was. That was, his, that was his hair dye. Oh man, because like we're at the booth and like um, he because came up to me. He's like, nowhere. what is that? Oh, so he like just died it like that morning or the night before. Yeah, it, it had to have been super, super early. That's what that was. Holy hell. I was like, what is Scott? I'm like, I thought maybe he did like war paint or something. <laughs> That's as a guy who also dyes his hair, you know, blacker. <laughs> I, I can I can relate because you get I that. Uh, I can't relate. This hair is naturally jet black. The uh, 
You know, mine. I got grays. Sammy's got grays too. I'm sure. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the color gray is. Not yet. Wait. Just wait. Boy, I'm 31. Just wait. You're talking now. You're talking. I've been, t- I've been talking. You've been talking. It's gonna hit I've you. I've been talking. Let it. Let it hit. You know what will happen? <laughs> it'll become what? salt and pepper, and it'll look so good. You're gonna make it work for you. Really the, quick. Uh, really quick. Yeah. I'm. I'm on Twitter. A little yeah. bit of bubbly. It's already a t-shirt. <laughs> A little bit of bubbly. <laughs> Jesus. These guys. It's it's literally the it's literally like a screen grab almost, but it's like artistic. Like it's all like inverted drawing of Jericho in his promo when he won the championship, and it just says a little bit of bubbly. Jesus. <laughs> the best is the is the um the little bit of Monica in my, the Mambo Number no. Five song. Yeah, what about uh, it? They go, instead of instead of saying the girl's name, it's just a little bit of bubbly in my life. A little bit of bubbly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, dude, it's Jericho's, so, Jericho's so good with these one-liners. Oh, yeah. Dude, the it, he made it a thing. What do you mean it? So he used to say, he's like, you're going to get, and then he'd long pause, almost go off camera. Run back in the in the in the shot and goes it, and then everybody would like wait for the pop. It was like a what type thing. Are you serious? Oh, dude! And then the list that you just made the list. Yeah, that that went off well. Um, I mean, all the stuff, all the one liners he's had throughout the years. Hey, he's a legend. I mean, Chris Jericho's a legend, no question about it. I mean, the yeah. guys, the guys been wrestling since nineteen eighty nine or ninety. I want to say ninety. I believe it was. Yeah, I mean he's a ledge, well, a true ledge. Um, all right, let's talk about your favorite segment, your favorite moment around. My, of fa- one. Dude, my favorite moment was was Colt Cabana and MJF, and it For was now. a pretty fa- it was a pretty fast match. Um, and Max was kind of upset about Colt not being there in his life. <laughs> Father, so he's, he's not. I mean that's. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I get it. I get it. I understand. Yep. He's upset about his dad not being there for him, so he's like, "I want money," as any spoiled child would want. And yeah. Max is like, and Colt agreed. If he, if MJF won the match, mm-hmm. MJF gets a weekly allowance, <laughs> which is pretty fair. But if yep. MJF lost the match, he had to leave AAW, and sadly. Max did not win the match. He did not. He did not win the match. And Colt packed his bag for him and sent him off. Well, and then the best part was was the <laughs> over the intercom. It's like it's like last stop, or it's like what was it? Last call, last call, destination AEW. Yeah, it was like the uh, the voiceover, like the like the train going. It was like yeah. last call, next stop. AEW and it's got it a was great like, pop. It was it was at that moment like everybody went from like the whole hating MJF to like it was for Max's character, which he doesn't really get to do very many classy things honestly because it's just his gimmick. Yeah, it was done perfect. It was like, fantastic. It was the ending to the Colt and MJF. Well, the whole well, the whole father son thing. There's more to this. The the song you're forgetting the song. Oh well, no, I'm just I'm I'm talking about the moment, man. I'm talking about all right. everything. All right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> but no, like like I'm saying, like there was, there was, MGF was like, no, I'm not leaving without you. He's like, he's trying to grab his, he's trying to grab Colt's hand, and Colt's not letting, not not budging. And then you said the song. What was the song again? Father of Mine by Everclear. Father I was, of Mine. You just hear it going, ding 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 ding. ding. Father of Mine. <laughs> Yeah, just it was like, lost it. man, the song choices between last year and this year. I mean, oh, dude, when this, I didn't even know this was coming. This was like T. No, I had, no, I had, so I walked to the back and then, um, cause I was like, okay, cool. This moment's over. I just wanted, to, I went up to Max really quick. He goes, we're not over yet. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Okay. So I ran back out cause I thought the segment was done. <laughs> it was so good. And then the song played. Then so like, he storms out. You know, with, you know, with this bag, everything's the segment's done, and the song's still playing, and then he runs back in and hugs Cole, <laughs> like, what, file goodbye. No, and I mean, it was, it was, 
it was perfect. And then in perfect MJF fashion, he tries to <laughs> low blow Colt one more time. <laughs> oh god! And the Colt stops it and was like, "Get the fuck out of here, dude!" Like that's the best. That to me, Max is of the new generation, like the new new. I mean, he's 22, 23. He is in Cray's my favorite. He's the best thing to come out of the new generation. If there's one thing that would make me watch AEW, it's my it's our buddy Max. He's been you know what I like about let's say this. He's he's gone now. But I gotta say this. Uh no to the crew. I always judge guys and girls on how they treat the crew. They treat each other great. They're fine. They're all they're um, you know, they're all treating each other as they do. But how they treat a crew, because crew changes show to show. And Max, from day one, was so respectful to our crew. From production to music to ring crew, he treated everybody so respectfully. I never, ever forgot that about him. I think that he, he, earned, he earned such respect from everybody day one. And I, I, I love that about him, I think. And I wish him the best because of that. I think he's a, he's a fantastic guy. And he's going to... he's. The world sky's the limit for him, you know, as we know that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the whole thing, me and Max. I mean, we were. Yeah. When I told him at MLW that I'm shooting, that I'm going to be at AEW, he was extremely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no, uh, but honestly, um, great Max and I have had many a conversations i mean he's still he's he's a young kid so he i he, he yeah. gets i mean like any kid i mean at 21 you were discouraged i'm sure, sure. i was discouraged a lot i mean you you let what people say get to you a little bit more at that age sure i mean he's 21 man he's that's still, no, he's young no he's 23 now yeah 23 I mean, that's young though still you know 23 fuck yeah. oh good for him dude he's uh he's awesome now, yeah. That guy's going to go places. Just so, He's going to go places based on how he treats people. That's what it comes down to. So, little quick uh, little quick thing. Yeah. Max and I, he was going over what he wanted to say. And we pantomimed all this out. And this was at AEW. And we pantomimed all this out. And everybody was just sitting there laughing. Because I was going through the motions... I would, like if he tried to punch me, I would sell it and all that stuff. And it was like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> awesome. Dude, it was such a good backstage vibe there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. So then, um, top that, and just to top that out, we had a, we had a uh, tag team title change, three way tag team title match, besties, Lucha brothers and LAX given, the you know, kind of counting down their, their days on the indies, but, um, the yeah, former, LAX. A former LAX, yeah. We're going to get to that. Wait, um, wait, they're not the former LAX until Friday, blah, blah, blah. That's true, <laughs> technically. Um, uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of new name. Uh, it reminds me of the gimmick from the 90s, the Los Boricuas. I'm not a fan of that, but anyway, we'll get to that. How dare uh, you? How dare I? I don't know. How dare I, just, you? I thought there could have been something better than Boricuas. I don't they know. Were not, they were not the Boricuas. They're just, they're not going by any name right now. They were they were labeling it the Boricuas. No, they were not. They they just been going by PNP. All right, we'll Pride find. and powerful. Okay, well, all right. We'll see what they come up with. But uh, then we had tag team title change. Besties regained, but uh, it was short lived. That celebration. You want to talk? You want to talk about this uh, short lived celebration? As the. <laughs> As they're celebrating. That's the sound of destruction coming into AAW, my friends. Oh yeah. As... This was, well first was a little bit of a little bit of cuteness that came in. We had Scarlet Bordeaux returning to AAW. I mean, perfect timing. I mean, the besties win the championships back. And yeah. Scarlet, who has been absent for almost a year. At least. Almost. Comes, and joined... comes back. Like the timing for that was also really well done. Like that was just kind of like a good. Um, you don't think it went too long? You don't think we went waited too long for her to come in? Well, we did. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of the ending segment after the match. 
That's what I'm saying. Like it yeah, took a no, while. I don't think I, I don't think we should have had that. I think immediately after the pinfall, like 15, 20 seconds, Scarlet's music hits. She should have came running out. And then she jumped into Davy's arms. Fitchett was like, fuck no, have you seen her Instagram? And then Have you seen her Instagram? <laughs> He's like, I'm out here. I don't want any part of this. I mean, yeah, he, Davey he shoved Fidget, though, which is like away right away, which was funny. As soon as he saw her, he like shoved Fitch. He's like, man, fuck that, this. That was bros. That uh, the bros before. Uh, well, I'm not going to call Scarlet that, but <laughs> we all know how the phrase goes was not a new effect. Right. No, not at all. So uh, but then he's celebrating and all of a sudden uh, some Alice in Chains hits and uh we have a debut, a very scary debut. Killer Cross made his debut in yeah. AAW. Huge pop. Oh, People. dude, it was so good because you and I have known for how uh, long this has been in the works. Trying. I mean, long time, long time to get Killer Cross. Very but long time. It worked out, and uh, he's paused in that moment where he looked and Davey steps up. He's like, oh, I got him. I can do this. And then he's facing off of them in the ring. And she shoves him into Cross. <laughs> and he destroys Davey. Oh, just, dude. He's dead. He's just like, this motherfucker's gonna die. And I was like, oh my god. And uh, he killed him. And then Fitcher comes out trying to defend his buddy's honor. He gets smashed for his, uh, for his good deed. And Scar takes the mic and that was it. So you know, it was a, a hell, a hell of a debut. A hell of a debut. Very interesting. Very yeah, so very, correct. very well done for a debut. Yeah, let's get to night two here. I don't want to spend too much time uh, wasting here. Let's because you got a, you had an early morning flight. We'll yeah, talk. no, we're fun. I mean, we're 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 right on pace for what we want to be doing. We're right, at, night... we're at the thirty-two minute mark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, night two had some highlights too. Now. Night two started off with what people have said is Colt Cabana's greatest match in at least five years. Honestly, Josh that was my favorite Colt Cabana match that I've watched. Ever? Probably since Punk and Hero days. Oh, like, wow. I'm I'm going like, like, I love, like, I appreciate Colt's shtick that he does with the comedy and everything. Like, I don't bash that at all. I actually appreciate when there's a nice comedy spot in the middle of a card, I think it's it's needed. It breaks up the monogamy, or is that is that the word? Monotony. Monotony. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. And, but this was a fantastic showing by Colt Cabana. Yeah, probably one of his best matches ever. I, I really would put it up there because he hit a he, freaking he hit a freaking Canadian destroyer off the top rope. Yeah, which is nuts to think that Colt, Colt did that. Colt Cabana, in 2019, hit a Canadian destroyer from the top rope. Crazy, huh? On Josh Alexander. Crazy. Tell me that you that you thought five years ago you would hear me say that. No, I wouldn't. Uh, so, no, that was very impressive. That match was great. The match was fantastic. Josh match wins. So good. Yeah, Josh wins, advances, but a fantastic, fantastic match. Fantastic. Uh, that was a highlight for sure. I think Ace Romero Paco was a great fun match as well. That was a good uh, one. Paco, uh, I'm Ace, sorry, that's, we, we didn't mention Ace and Willie the night before was phenomenal too. Oh, Ace Willie. and Willie was was a was a great Hoss match. Yeah, great match. Anyway, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to skip no, that no, on no, night no. one. Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're just trying to go over. Um, Kingston Stallion was a very good personal match because it goes back story. to the wrestling days. Yeah, I love just it when we can story. get some story stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, you want to get started. You want to, you still, they, here's the thing with tournaments are interesting because they're booked in a way to get to a, a turn, a single winner, but you still have moments in between where you got to tell a story because you got to further your stories till the next show. So yeah, you can't yeah. have your show be paused. No, so you have to be Especially very for careful. two shows. Right. So you have to be careful that you don't lose your momentum in a tournament. You know, you have to keep that further, in, especially when you got a show the following month. So that's, that was very important that we kept, uh, Curtin and Eddie floating like that. So, yeah, that was good too. What else? Um, and then probably, man, that Lucha Brothers LAX tag match. Holy, sh- 
Nikes. Oh. <laughs> that was incredible. That, that was a brutal, brutal match. My thing was, man, I can't believe they're going this hard the night before they got to go super hard on, on pay-per-view. And I appreciate that about them. Like they, 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 give 100%. Went, they both were on a show, a very important show the next day. I mean, and the Lucha Brothers freaking killed it in this Yo. in this ladder in this ladder match. I mean, Phoenix, I think it was Fe- I think it was Phoenix or Pentagon hit a Canadian destroyer into a table into from and I think it was on uh, Matt Jackson. Mm-hmm. It was insane. It's nuts. That's not, yeah, dude. They, but they didn't hold back for us, you know. They, it's a respect thing. You know, they they weren't gonna short the fans, uh, and they didn't, man. They went all out. But what a match! That match was just so goddamn wild. I, if you don't even know where to look, half the no. time you're like, what am I looking here? No, it was it was very very well done. Uh, so that's definitely a highlight. There's a there's a reaction that one of the fans got of me. Uh, because Penta threw a chair straight into Ortiz's head. Yeah. <laughs> and it was wrapped around Ortiz, and I was just like, the fuck did I... Like, I think I just got CTE from that. <laughs> um, you know, there was a time period a couple years ago where people were really cringing at chair shots. I feel like they've lightened back up on chair shots. You know what? I think when... I think fans are okay with seeing a hand being up. Well, Ortiz didn't have a hand though. That's well, for damn sure. But the thing is, it wasn't. It wasn't a. It wasn't the the chair shot. Wasn't Pentagon holding the chair? Yeah, it, it was being thrown, and the chair wasn't bent or anything. It wasn't like the Keith Lee shot from Sammy. Oh God! In 2017. That 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 still hurts when you oh, watch that. Oh, to God. this day, to yeah. this day. It just scrambled brains. Oh my god, painful. It was brutal. Yeah, that was in Berwyn, right? Uh, that was no, that was uh Bourbon Street. Bourbon Street. Okay. That was United We Stand, two thousand seventeen. Hey, you guys remember these show names, man? I'm that so... was the, that was like that was that was like the first show I started taking pictures of the fan. That's kind of why I remember it. Ah, okay, gotcha. It was gotcha. like it was, well. Technically, I think it was Take No Prisoners 2017 mm-hmm. because I was I was in the crowd at Logan, but I took like two or three pictures. And okay. then and then but I took a lot of pictures at that bourbon show when I was when I was on the crowd because mm-hmm. I was on the stage. So mm-hmm. I had a really good view. Yeah, that's a great that's a great view, actually. I- I, I regret never sitting in those seats for a show because that's Dude, a fantastic I seat. Was, I was a – first I was a front row like addict and then I became a stage addict for like that last year. Fun. And I appreciated the stage so much because your view was never blocked on the stage, especially at Logan with how yeah. often they go into the crowd. I mean even the stage at the at, at Logan isn't isn't safe anymore but – But it's, but, it's still not as good as uh... – as Bourbon Street stage because your right Street level is so good. Your level with the um, your level right with the uh, with the ring. Yeah. You're right next to the damn ring. It's awesome. There was like, what do we charge for those back in the day? You remember? Fifty. Fifty. I think they're sixty Fifty-five. now. Sixty now. Yeah, they were, they were money seats, man. I gotta say, I I regret never doing those. Yeah, that was Nicole and I were just addicted to to, to those seats. Yeah, yeah, definitely. When she got in, you guys were front stage buds. Um, no, definitely worked. Front row out. buddies. That was front FRBs. FRBs. All right, what else we got highlight wise? Night two. I'm gonna say. Oh, uh, but then we us. also have. Um, don't don't forget that we had, um, cross attacking Airwolf. Oh God! And that led into the the six man tag. So Cross came out. And attacked Airwolf. Airwolf was supposed to have a match. Mm-hmm. Just completely destroyed. Yep. Thrown into that nasty um, corner part. The, the nasty turn post. And, and Did those, his head and, hit the clip of the turn post? Dude, I hate, I hate that ring. I got those weird clips. And I, I think know, his head you know hit what, it. Do you know what the clips are for? No. Okay. 
So if you turn the clips around, it's for smaller rings. If you notice where the clip placement are oh, at, the, yeah. ropes be, the ropes would be lower. Is that what those are? It, Shit. It's, for, it's for those low rings where you have... So remember oh. how, how we were watching the Impact, the Kelly Combat show? Yeah. So remember how it had that short ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. what it would be for. It would be for the shorter ring. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. That's what those are. Um, Dude, I was like Glory scared Pro that he... uses Glory Pro uses that quite a bit. I was like, dude, this guy, his head hit that clip. Didn't it? Did it hit the clip or did no, he just no. miss so it? I looked, I looked at the pictures and um, Cross was not that reckless because at the – realistically, guys, at the, we all know. Like at the end of the day, like nobody's trying to like fatally kill somebody here. No, no, of course. I mean he's definitely – you know, I just thought like it's one of but those things Cross where it was, was hard to gauge it where it was. No, so Cross was actually looking at that clip the entire time. He was so okay. Good. Was, so when I when I looked at the pictures, I only posted the like one or two. He yeah. was looking at that clip the entire time and actually adjusted Airwolf on the fly. Gotcha. Good. Good. That's no awesome. Because it was, <laughs> it was yeah, that. That's tough to avoid, man. If you're going for that move, it's like oh scary. shit. I was very scared because I even my back hit it hit that turn that those clips like two times during the night and it hurt. Really? Imagine getting slammed into it. Damn, yeah, that sucks. No, those are those are tough, man. So I'm glad I'm glad he did not hit his head. I thought, yeah, I, I figured it'd be worse if he hit his head. He'd be no, he'd no, be he was good or something. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah, cross though. That that highlights of that get <laughs> fucking yeah. destroyed like that. But highlights Scarlet, of that are, are on, a promo. Well, highlights to that are in that cross video that Rob did. That so uh, Killer Cross uh, essentially it's debut it's video. Hmm. Film. What'd you it's say? Not a, it's not a. It's a film. Film. Rob sorry. makes films. He's a filmmaker. I'm sorry. Fucking respect on Team Cart's name. I'm sorry. We did. Uh, we definitely interviewed Cross and got his thoughts, and um, you know, got that on tape on what the hell he's doing here, and then you know, Rob put that together in a film, and that film is available for viewing on AW Pro on YouTube. Take a look. It is. But uh, all right, so that was that. Yeah, Cross was cutting a promo. Then it led into Scarlet cutting a promo, uh, calling out Jessica Havoc actually. And Jess comes out. Yeah. Jess comes out, and Cross stops her before she can get to her uh, to Scarlet. And then the wrestlers come out and attack, attack Jess. Mm-hmm. And then we have the besties come through, make the save, and then we have a six man tag, which is very yeah. well done. Besties are, I mean, um, heel rascals, man. I love it. I absolutely love heel rascals. Heel rascals, interesting, huh? You so don't associate that with heel, but they are. I think they work better as a heel. Like I, I appreciate the gimmick that they're doing on Impact, but imagine heel rascals on Impact. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the transition to it. You know, they were fed up and they're like sick of shit and they're like, we're going to go heal. Screw you guys. And they went heal. So um, can't blame them. Everybody gets frustrated every after a while. So uh, it was it was done well. I got to say it was done. It was done well to get them to that heel point. So it's and it's interesting because they're such nice guys. <laughs> but so it's weird when they're heel. But um, I like yeah. I think I think they're great when they're heel and it it. It flushes out their characters a little bit more. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, that was that was some that was a highlight moment there. We had uh, Sammy Callahan gave Chris Statlander a title match, and he's doing the intergender thing. It's getting very over with the fans. And him and Statlander had a banger, dude. That was like shit. She could she could hang, and you know not only that, Sammy is fantastic. So. She looked great wrestling Sammy. Sammy can work with anybody. And I love Statlander's just talent. She's awesome. She's very, very good. She's, She's unique very, very good. In, in this world of women's wrestling where a lot of women are very similar. Because I think this generation is very much focused on um, their talent. Kind of characters slightly have kind of gone the wayside. 
it, that's overall. I think that's in general that characters have gone by the way, son. And I feel things. like and I feel like Statlander stands out. Absolutely. Absolutely she does. And character, character is very important. She really gets it. And I appreciate that about her. And she she performs it well in the ring too. Like she stays in character, which yeah, is cool. It doesn't go away when the match starts. Right. So that's cool. I appreciate that about her. Uh, good match, Sammy. Again, you know he could he could hang with anybody. He can make anybody look great, and he sure did, man. So good for Sammy, the champ. He retained. So um, that was a good highlight, uh, and the biggest highlight of all, the winner, Basil, the winner of the 2019 Jim Line Memorial Tournament, the fourth annual JLMT T T J L M T. That's an inside joke, folks, with us. <laughs> the JLM. T. T. <laughs> is Josh Alexander, the walking weapon, wins it. Former AEW heavyweight champion heading towards the title again uh, at the Windy City Classic as a result of this win. So talk about four matches in three days. And can we share this? He had a 102 degree fever doing night two. Dude, it, four matches, four in three days, at at full caliber. Let's let's remind people of that full caliber matches. That's no joke, man. No joke. The guy is truly one of the best. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, I've been on this Josh Alexander, quote unquote, bandwagon for forever. I was so when he when he came back for that one match in two thousand seventeen. Um, which I don't think he was supposed to be, but <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I was very excited and was very disappointed with myself with how shitty my photography was back then. Um, <laughs> like I looked back at the pictures, I was like, "God damn it, this is such a waste." <laughs> God damn it! I was so Sorry. pissed off. I was so pissed off with with myself after that match. I'm not gonna lie, but I think I've been making up for it this last year with uh, between Impact and AAW. I'd say so. I'd say you're doing okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Dude, I'm doing all early right. on. I'm doing all right. Dude, I right. not a bad day. But um, but yeah, guys, that was uh, that's a tournament. Now I, I gotta say one thing uh, as we as we want start winding this up here. Big shout out to our listener Mark all the way from the UK. Dude, how about hell? That, huh? Fucking yeah, man! Who that dude is to awesome. Us. Mark uh, was was hanging out in our fair city here for the big wrestling weekend. Came up to us and recognized us and said hello. Very very awesome well, guy. Came up and he's like, "Shit, you are way uglier." And Trent, you are beautiful. <laughs> what a guy! What a guy! Great eyesight, in that <laughs> but uh, gorgeous. But uh, dude, that was awesome to meet you, Mark. I mean. It's crazy. I mean, I knew I do get the stats. I see that we get listeners around the world, you know, in the UK, Canada are two of our other bigger markets we're getting listened to. But when when some of those listeners actually come up to you from another country and recognize you and then thank you for the job you do, man, like that's that's humbling, huh, Basil? It's it's fantastic. Great feeling, man. Great feeling. It's it, and it feels it makes it all worthwhile. You know, 100 percent makes it all worthwhile makes us want to do this even more so mark thank you very much for making our day with that we appreciate that so that was a, that was a big highlight for me big highlight for me on that one so basil let's let's do this let's tell people where you're going to be this week i mean I'll, you mentioned well, what on, you did also on. yeah yeah let's uh yeah. i'm not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna glaze over on this one i'm sorry um no. so i did make my quote-unquote aew debut uh on saturday i worked backstage um for for AEW. i cut all the promos that have been used on twitter youtube um on the channels and then also some stuff i recorded for the new road to tnt that just Mm -hmm. that just aired today um did a few backstage shots of hank Hangman Adam Page, Young Bucks, Cody with Arn, uh, just a few random things. Tennille was on there, so I I was definitely nervous. Um, I didn't realize 
I didn't realize the m- more I can do because I was just so nervous in that setting. And I just the job the the job that I was given, I wanted to do right. And then next time I know what to do, and mm-hmm. I feel like I can do more. So it was process. a good it was a good it was a good it was a very good learning experience because I wasn't my own boss, so to say, that I normally am. True. So I worked I worked with Jess, who is this ex WWE producer. She actually worked on I don't know if you've seen it at all, but that was when Miz and Maurice were mocking John and Nikki and they were they were mocking their their total divas or yeah, like their total diva segments and stuff like that. Uh, oh, she I shot all that. Yeah, about. no, I know. That's what I'm saying. I figured <laughs> you didn't. Um, but she she shot all those, which they were very well done vignettes. Okay, cool. Um, and so she was a pleasure to work with. Uh, there was another guy named Steve, uh, who does a lot of the video work for AEW. He was awesome to work with as well. Jeff Jones, who's my who's my direct boss at AEW, another person who was fantastic to work with, helped me out. Uh, Dion, who I was sending all the videos to, we were like a well-oiled machine, just getting videos cut or recorded, cut, edited, sent to the right computer, uploaded within five to ten minutes. Like we were, we were go, 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 like the entire night. Nice. So. Yeah, pretty impressive, man. Good, impressive debut for you. And you go from that. Uh, on Saturday, when they needed Warrior Wrestling the next day, yeah, I was like Jello that day. I was completely out of it on Sunday. True. I, I, true story. Mm. Um, the reason why it took me so long to pack up when you saw me like literally just finishing, because after the show, I went by my promo area, and because it was on the carpet, I legit passed out for about ten minutes. <laughs> Shit! And somebody found me and woke me up. Oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I was, I was drained at that point, completely drained, completely out of it, because the the AEW that was like thir- that was a fourteen hour day for me. I was there at eleven forty five, and didn't leave until about two in the morning. Mm, Jesus. Yeah, it was because yeah. we were we were trying to finish up some edits. Yeah, and it was very brutal. Man, yeah, rough for you. And then you're right back on the road tomorrow morning. You want to tell people where you're going to be? Uh, I will be in Las Vegas, Nevada for Impact Wrestling at Sam's Town Casino, Hotel and Casino. There you go. For, and this is the lead to Bound for Glory, right? This is it? I believe these are the last. This is the, this is a month's worth of tapings, and I think they still have two weeks. How, how long have they been in Mexico for now? It's only been one Mexico because Cali Cali Combat was only one week. So, so there, one, there, there's only been one Mexico. Only so aired one Mexico, yeah. They they were in Mexico for two days, so that means they have th- their name. That means there's this week and then two more weeks of Mexico, and then it leads into four weeks of of Vegas taping. So these will be the final episodes. Yeah, that's it. Going into Vegas. Um, let me let me let me. Yeah, that adds up. That I, know, I know, I know. I, I just, I'm, you know me. I always like to look at a calendar to make sure I'm not speaking stupid. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. Yeah, that will be uh, that. And then that weekend, um, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, I'll technically be on two Impact shows at the same time on that Friday. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I will be I will be on two Impact shows at once uh, on the 18th in South Bend, Indiana. Russell Travel and Impact Wrestling are teaming up to do a show in South Bend, Indiana. Yep. And there will be a show on Twitch, and then on the 19th there will be a show with in partnership with Warrior Wrestling and Zello Pro. And there's this like musical act. I'm yeah, trying to remember. I can't, I can't, I don't remember the name. It sounds like a truck. Yeah, they're playing. They're, like, p- performing live during this, huh? Yeah. Oh, I think, uh, I think I know it. It's uh, it's my band, Hemi. That's right, everybody. We're playing live at 
the All Glory event, the night before Bomb for Glory, the Fan Fest and show that's going on. That's right, everybody. Playing a couple of songs. We've been asked. Josh Matthews himself, Basil, asked me personally. I, Your I, boy. I, I've heard of yes. the dude before. I think you know that guy. I think I he, hate, uh, yeah, he's just my boss at Impact. He's got a thing for brown guys. Uh, you know, he like, seems to like us and uh, give us opportunities. So um, he's given me a chance. I'm also and... going to go up to him and hug him tomorrow and be like, I heard you love me. No, don't say that. He told me not to tell you. <laughs> <It's> too late. <laughs> But uh, we're going to be playing. <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't know, my band did two songs for Impact this year. We did the uh, our song Decay for the Rebellion pay-per-view in April. And we provided a song called Avalon Averted, the Fixer remix for Bound for Glory's uh, advertising. So we've been working with Impact this year. And um, they said, hey, why don't you guys just play the Fan Fest? And I said, you don't have to ask me twice. That'll happen. So, so we're all set to do that. your Impact ba- debut. That's right, man. Officially part of the show. So psyched for that. That's going to be a blast. That's going to be a good weekend coming up. About a month and a half. So, and then also another good thing to go off the impact, or not impact, uh, AEW, Mm -hmm. is I'm being brought back on the 27th, the day before Thanksgiving for the Chicago return. There you go, man. Busy. The the fall is set, basically. Dude, we're just, it's just, we're backstage boys are on the up and up. Yeah, how about it, man? Good for for us. Good for and 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 the other backstage boys, Rob and, and Nate, also are making their things happen. Every, you know, everybody. I mean, Nate was doing his evolve thing a couple weeks ago. Rob has been killing it with the videos. So Rob's name is just getting out there more and more. Nate's been on bigger shows. Yeah, man, ZMT is just uh, we're on it, guys. We 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 all set goals this year. This was what, these were it's goals. what happens when you surround yourself with goal mind. Like this is not even like trying to be like cliche or cheesy, but this is honestly what happens when you set yourself around goal minded people because either none of us are in each other's fields. True, but we are constantly asking each other for advice. On top of which, it's a matter of support too. You gotta. Surround yourself with people who support what you're doing as well and, and can help guide and 100%. give you advice. So that helps, man. That helps. But uh, Basil, let's not keep you, man. You got to you gotta pack. You got to be in bed. Early morning flight. Yet. Yes, you better go do that. <laughs> let's get your plugs in. Then we can get the hell out of here. All right. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at BZ. That's a B, two E's, four Z's, and a Y. Uh, all my pictures can be found at basilmahmood.com. That's B A S I L M A H M U D dot com. And where can they find you, Trent? You guys can find me at Vanilla Joke on Instagram and Twitter. Find my band Hemi at Hemi Music, H E M I M U S I C, Hemi Music on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also find this show at uh, the BSB show on Facebook and Twitter. And oh, Basil, before you go, is that Instagram ready yet? You know what? It's I worked four shows in four days. I've got a lot of stuff coming up this week with Impact. Uh, next week. Next week it is when he's back. We're gonna we're gonna get that Instagram up, ladies and gentlemen. Also, don't forget you can find this podcast wherever podcasts are found: Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, and Spotify along with YouTube. Now, if you listen on a uh, little perk for YouTube listeners, for the late night people, this show goes up on YouTube about half a day earlier than it does on the other feed. So if you're a YouTube guy, YouTube girl, whatever you are, YouTube person, go to YouTube, look up backstage, the Backstage Boys podcast, give us a, subs- a subscription, and be notified as soon as this podcast goes up like, early. subscribe, comment, please. Yes. Yeah, guys. Uh, iTunes listeners, if you are an iTunes listener, take a second right now, right this minute, and go ahead and give us a rating on iTunes. It helps the algorithm. Play cons have been nice. It's been going up. We appreciate you guys sharing the podcast. We've been seeing a lot more people co- trickling into our listenership, which we is really cool. We appreciate you. Very much so. Very much so. But keep sharing it, guys. Keep sharing it. And get those ratings up because the more you rate us, the more we get seen. And the more we get seen, the more we get heard. And the more we get heard, the more, the more we, we get, get booked. paid. That's right. This is all this is all an end game here, guys. But uh, but yeah, guys, that should do it for us. Basil got to get on an airplane soon. I'm just gonna chill, watch some Family Matters because that's what I've been doing lately. Hulu. That's right, Basil. <laughs> Hulu, baby. I'm watching Family Matters. 
But uh, I got I got some stuff to prep for coming up as well. So, guys, that's going to do it for us. Jim Line Memorial Tournament 2019 in the books. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you on episode number 46 next week. Bye. Bye-bye.